That was a close game throughout. Number one thing I'm surprised about, that game didn't end with the winning team scoring 84, 85 points. How they got into the 90s after slogging along offensively, both teams, was amazing. We got hot from three late, and that was awesome. Yeah. P.J. Washington, Luka, Kyrie, and Maxi Kleba. Kleba hit a huge three. All had big buckets down the stretch late. For the most part, we made our free throws. We made enough free throws to close out the game. I thought we did a great job of letting L.A. let <laughs> James Harden just like, hey, would you like a practice three-pointer to, to get this thing within a game? Again? One, one thing I did really love, and it might be a small thing, but I think it's indicative of this player and how much he wants this is in the post game. Did you hear one of the things Kyrie said is he goes, I can't miss that free throw. Yeah. Like they won and he goes, but Maxi got the rebound and that's what a team does is work together. And I like that. He was like, Hey, I know we just won and we played great, but I can't miss that. Free Mike, throw. I almost texted and I was like, did he miss that on purpose? Cause it, the way it all worked for us, it looked like, Hey, this is exactly how I planned it. But no, there was no way yeah. he did that on purpose. I, uh, that would be, and it's a great win because at the end when you're up 90 to 81 and it feels like with about a minute and 30, yeah. you're like, we got this thing. And you then, know better. You, and I then mean, you I know. know and you just saw the Knicks come back against Philadelphia yeah. in yep. a similar situation somewhat. And when you just let James Harden take a wide open three, then on a out of bounds play, you give them the, the layup was that? and the foul. That's, and and, that's, and luckily the foul got over. The Harden three was it Kyrie and Luca that broke? I thought it was fall? Derek Jones okay. Jr. So and Derek Luka. Jones it was a whole and Luca, team. all five of them just met in the middle and just but, were like, "What happened?" It was but, those two guys, but particularly though. those two broke off to like if you're facing the TV off to the left, yeah. and one of them was supposed to stay while the other one followed, yeah. and that left. <laughs> wide open when I saw that. I was like, what the hell? It's even just, on the broadcast, they're like, uh oh. He yeah. even looked like got confused. This is awesome. Like, oh, okay, oh, really? shoot. That's right. the most that's the best communication I've ever seen. But I mean, somebody obviously forgot their job, right? They yes. thought that they were switching everything or staying with everything. I don't know which one messed up, Derek Jones Jr. or Luca, but they messed up. They did. Luckily, it didn't matter. They played their butts off. They I, played so hard for 48 minutes. I thought, first of all, I definitely agree with that. The defensive effort, unbelievable. There were so many times, Kevin, that you know Mike was kept saying, getting in front of the the screens, getting your butt down or up, yeah, forward, you pull it in, yeah. pull it in. Like I saw that. I I literally saw Kyrie do that multiple times last night. And I was like, oh wow, they know what they're doing right now defensively. Man, okay, I, I want to talk about something that won't necessarily show up in the box score then, but it speaks to that defensive effort that you're talking about whether it was Jones even Luca and Kleba I thought they had so many more contested rebounds that they didn't necessarily get but they were up in somebody's face about it you know so I, I know it might still show up in the box score as this was a Clippers rebound this was a Clippers re rebound but you had like those three guys in particular stu stood out to me as they were pushing and putting pressure on trying to get the ball but also like slowing down any potential transition the other way. Hey, Kevin, I know you don't like this, but I want to give credit to the referees last night for letting the Mavericks play physical and also then the, the Mavericks for recognizing that they were letting them play physical early in the game. Like that, There was a very early moment where somebody went to the basket and there were like two or three different defenders right there all over. And I was like, whoa, hold on. This is a – that was a physical play right there, yeah. and the rest didn't call like a cheap foul real quick, and immediately the Mavs recognized and said, okay, they're going to let us do that. We're doing it. We're not going to wait until later and be like, hey, what's going on here? They immediately recognized this is going to be a physical battle tonight. The rest are letting it go. Let's play that way. And that was the, that was the hugest factor because it paid off throughout the night on the points of those offensive and defensive rebounds. This is what at times I hate about NBA playoffs is I start getting really mad at referees. I, yeah. In the regular season, I'm like, it even, come on, guys. It's going to even out, whatever. It's one call. In the playoffs, you're like, how can Harden get that and Luka not? You know, and it's just, and I get it. It's a very tough sport to ref. Those guys are doing the oh. best job they can. They are the best in the world. Whether you think they're good or not doesn't yeah. matter. They are the best in the world. But there are times where it's like, boy, they're letting them play really physical. And then the next time you're like, you touched him with 
your pinky? Yeah. And that's like they called one at one point for Harden, which was iffy. And you're like, all right, if you're going to call. Then Kyrie makes another unbelievable 10 foot lefty runner. That was awesome. And Terrence Mann gets underneath them. Yeah. And you're like, that's more egregious than what Harden just got. And you just get confused, but I get it. It's a very tough sport to referee. Uh, and I felt like I don't, if we were lost, I wouldn't blame the refs. No. Would not have blamed the ref. But I did feel like at times. L.A. was getting, at times, a more favorable call, but maybe that's just home court advantage. Maybe so. I just felt that, like, the Mavericks were like, okay, if, the, if they're going to allow us to be physical, which I'm not used to seeing from them. Even, I mean, Luka's defense was physical well, last Well, the last, was great. so at the All-Star break, uh, Adam Silver mm -hmm. got with the referees and said, our game's out of hand. There's too many free throws. There's too many yeah. fouls. Let's let them play a little bit more. They're going to be the ticked off. Play. But let's let them figure this out before the playoffs. And so I do think players are now used to how the refs are really allowing the game to be played more than they allowed the game to be played before the All-Star break. And I feel like these, I watch MLB players, NBA players, and even NFL players, they seem to adjust pretty quickly to the way the refs or the umpires see that. change the rules on them in the middle of a season. I'll also add, you know, P.J. Washington showing up. And this, I'm just going to say defensively right now, before we get to the offensive side, because I know that was a huge factor too. But him, I thought Derek Jones defensively, they, they knew what their jobs were. They knew what they were supposed to do. That helped in that effort to, like, those role players. I thought Lively did a good job. Lively was fantastic. And this is the thing. Gafford hasn't even shown up yet. Like Gafford hasn't even That's, arrived. Okay, because you don't disagree about. Thank God, Derek Lively. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you got was this able look, and I was like, hold on. Well, because right now, I would like to make this comparison. And if you're too young, I get it. Or if you haven't really followed the NBA that much, I get it. Leandro Barbosa, I have no clue what his road and home splits were in the playoffs, but I feel like it was 25 points at home on 90% shooting and five points on the road on 10% <laughs> right, shooting. Right. I'd never seen a dude. He was with the Phoenix Suns for most of this yeah. run. He was like, how does he do this? How is he an all-star in Phoenix? Because they're cheering for him. And if they're not cheering for him, he's like, I shouldn't even be in this basketball game. And I'm hoping at this point... Daniel Gafford is the Leandro Barbosa of centers that for some reason that two performances there on the road were so bad. The worst basketball he's played for the Mavs that maybe he has the Leandro Barbosa DNA where for some reason he needs the crowd to cheer for him for him to be at his best. Any, so. any injury or soreness factor for yesterday? Because obviously I know bounced off and on the court. He had the ankle uh, in the game one. And, and I'm not saying that's what it looked like a back last night. But yeah. Kevin, he, he went back in the game, so I don't did. give a crap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm, don't, I'm go, don't go back okay. in the game. If, you, if you're going to play like that, I don't think it was. I, I get that his back was probably yeah. tight, but there was just he was just kind of law. He's he just it, the moment he he was in a kind of it looked like to me a panic moment that it's still a really big thing. And I think he's going to bounce back. I do love him. I love that he's on the team. I would start him in game three as long as he's healthy. But it is worrisome that the first two games he's been a negative player for you. I will I will say this is one of the things I've been kind of monitoring, Kevin, because and maybe we'll get into this later in the show, but I asked Mike the about the Luca pass to Kleba and Kleba misses it. Kevin, you said you saw it, and then Luca jumps up and down and he's like, You gotta do this. Yeah. And we saw a couple moments last night where Luca was like, You have to you have to be here. You have to be in your spot. You have to be ready. And I wonder if Daniel Gafford's just not, he doesn't know the speed of playoffs. And he might how, be nervous. And it, everything's faster. Everything's, and, and I wonder if he's just not, because even on that jump, on that block, he goes up a tick too late and gets it off the backboard. And I don't have time for you to catch up, You right? got Yeah, you got to be ready for it right now. Now, now, Lively isn't scoring offensively the way you want to, but sure. I think he's pressing a little bit. You saw a moment last night where something went bad. He looked frustrated, and Kyrie gave him the calm down. Like you got to keep your head. You got to you got to stay here. But I think Lively, the touch we've seen around the basket, that hasn't shown up, and Gafford hasn't shown up. So those are two things that are missing still that I think are on the way. I would like to give Jason Kidd a lot of credit when guys look like they're crapping their pants. He's like, that's enough. Yes. Even like P.J. Right? Washington yes. had a great game overall. But in a moment, 
P.J. Washington started crapping his pants, and he's like, that's enough. Let's get you out of the game. We're going to give you a little bit of a break. Get about three I'm going to put somebody in else in yeah. because I can't, Gafford. Uh, it's like, hey, I can't let you work through this for five minutes. We will lose the game if I let you, role player, work through this. And so P.J. Washington got yanked after missing an uncontested alley-oop dunk and then making, I think, a turnover and maybe a little bad defensive decision. He's like, that's three plays yep. in a minute span. That's enough. I got to take you out and give somebody else the opportunity to play in this game. And P.J. Washington got to the bench, gathered his thoughts, and had a great finish to the game. So I want to give Jason Kidd a lot of credit for going, I don't have time for you role players. I have enough here on my bench to keep maneuvering and see who's going to play their best in these big moments. I mean, just look at Exum's minutes. He got six last night because he looked he looked like he had no clue what was going on. He looked frenetic out there. Okay. Frantic. F frantic. It works. I Phonetic. De definitely not that one. All right. I want to make sure I word this properly. Phonics? No, Reggie, just you know better. Just like I was supposed to know better, and you told me this morning. That's right. And I didn't follow that advice. Now I'm asking you, mm -hmm. trust the mistake that I made. Phoenix. Josh Green. I'm not I'm not saying I want him to shoot the ball. I'm not saying that at all. You hear me on that. That being said, I thought the pace, defense, and rebounding that he brought to the game were very much needed. We okay. might have a tough time agreeing on this. I'm just telling you, for Josh Green, I thought his ability to push the ball forward and some of those rebounds he, he got doesn't know where to close. go whenever he pushes the ball that forward, a, but he does stop that and is turn a around. Fair point. He definitely he, stops and turns around. He does have positive moments, but he also has some really big negative moments. And so I'm with you on your pot. I'm not going to argue. It's really tough, though, when literally I said this in. Punt, punt the ball from the corner. Just see if that goes in. Because you shooting looks like it. Like hitting from rim. Australia? It just looks like the luckiest thing in the world, even if it hits rim. Yeah, right. And I and once again, I give Jason Kidd credit. At one point there in the fourth quarter, he saw those positive things. And then as soon as he saw, crap, they're not going to guard him. And he's Russell Westbrooking at best these three-point shots. He's wide open. And so you're just like, all right, I got to take him out. His energy can cause issues. Running into James Harden when he can't make a three and giving him three free free throws, which are usually going to be three free points. So I think Josh Green, I'm not going to be opposed to him coming into game three and seeing what he can do. At the same time, because he's always hurt his whole career, he can't really improve his shooting on a consistent basis because he's not healthy enough to, to improve it that it's very tough in these situations, as I was told by the people who you know, work at Bally's, they have the extra cameras and audio that we don't get as an audience. What? When they were playing the Phoenix Suns a few years ago, they were like, shoot it, shoot it. Yeah. Like when Josh Green gets it, the whole Phoenix Suns bench is yelling for him to shoot it because that is, that is A-plus successful defense. I'm so not here for that either. Yeah. It's going to be tough because Josh Green does bring positive things. I'm not going to deny that. But he also brings some negative things that you really worry about.